So in the last part, we configured and generated our web app manifest, that manifest.json file, which tells the browser how our app should be run when it's installed for a, a user's given mobile device. And if you're looking for more information about the manifest, there's a great guide at developers.google.com in their web fundamentals area about all things progressive web apps, including the manifest. We're going to move on to service workers. And service workers will allow us to save all of our data, so to speak. They'll cache our data so that, for example, when our user is offline, when they're in an offline setting, or they have a bad network connection, they'll still be able to fetch the page, the data on the page, as well as all the HTML that they previously visited. So service workers are scripts that our browsers run in the background. They're essentially just a basic JavaScript file. However, it's somewhat separate from our application. It does things in the background. So this service worker is what will really give us the potential to give our users a native app experience, where even if we're not able to give them new data, if they are in a setting where there's no internet, at least we'll be able to still let them interact with our site. So in order to add a service worker, we certainly could write it ourselves, but it would be much easier to have one generated for us, since once again, this isn't a progressive web app course. We can generate one rather easily with the help of a Webpack plugin. And we know that Webpack runs in the background. There's an underlying Webpack setup that we make use of in all of our next scripts. But there's a way to expose that so we can configure it the way that we want. We can add a Webpack plugin that automatically makes for us a service worker. So we will install this plugin called SW Precache Webpack Plugin. And as that installs, we can start manually configuring our Webpack setup. We do that within a file called next.config.js. And since we're configuring Webpack here, we can't use Webpack to compile our JavaScript. So we'll have to use a common JS syntax in order to bring in the package that we just installed. So we'll call this package SW Precache Webpack Plugin and require SW Precache Webpack Plugin. Now, this configuration will come in the form of an object which we'll immediately export with module.exports. And we have this Webpack property which exposes a function where we get the Webpack config. And we can take this preset configuration and use the plugins property on it to push any new plugins onto this array. Plugins is just an array. So we'll push a new SW Precache Webpack plugin. So we'll instantiate the plugin and pass in a configuration object. And to this object, we can configure this plugin with a lot of different settings. We can give it a cache ID. This is particularly useful for cache busting. We could name it maybe hacker next. And we could add settings such as don't cache bust URLs matching. We don't want to remove certain things from the cache if our URL matches a certain regex pattern. So we can use properties like this to set up more advanced cache schemes. We'll take a rather simple approach, but just to let you know about what's possible. Now the service worker file that's generated for us has the file name service-worker.js. We can use the file name property to configure that to something else. We could name it offline.js, for example. We'll leave it at the default. We can minify our service worker JavaScript by setting minify to true. When it comes to the things that we want to cache or hold on to in the browser, we'll use the static file globs ignore patterns. We'll use this property to specify within an array the files that we want to ignore, the pattern of files that we want to ignore. We want to ignore anything coming from the .next folder. So we'll write this regex. We're basically just saying, OK, if we have a static file coming from this folder, ignore it. And with the runtime caching property, and set up our caching strategy. With service workers, there's different caching strategies for how we want to handle the data that we're holding on to. We can have a cache first strategy 
where if our network's sl slow or for the purposes of speed, we can just immediately serve stuff that we have saved in the cache, or we can have a network first strategy where we always get the freshest data if the network's available. So we'll use the network first approach and runtime caching takes an array, an array of objects, and in our one object, which will include, we'll have a handler, which will specify that caching strategy. As you can see, some of the options are cache first, cache only, network first, network only. We'll choose network first. In the URL pattern, we want to match URLs, which using this regex, either have the form HTTP or HTTPS using this question mark. And that's it. We'll have a relatively simple strategy here. And then at the very end, after we push the new plugin on onto the array, we'll make sure to return the config. Now this won't be enough. We are creating the service worker here, or rather the SW pre-cache plugin is creating the service worker, but we still need to register it. And a good place to register it is a page that most users will come to when they visit our app, and that will be the index page. So I'll head to the index page, and since service workers only exist in the browser, we can use a lifecycle hook for when the component mounts on the client, like component did mount, to handle this registration. And when the component mounts, we first want to check to make sure that we have the ability to use service workers in the browser. So we'll use this check if service worker in navigation, or, or in navigator, I should say. We'll check to see if there's a service worker property on this navigator object. If we go to our browser, we can open the console and we see we should have access to navigator and this service worker property. However, there's some browsers that don't yet still don't support service workers. No new browsers, but probably old browsers don't. Then on Navigator, we'll take navigator.serviceworker. We'll call the register method on it. We'll register slash service worker dash service dash worker dot js. And this is essentially a promise so we can add on a then to see if it was successful. If we're getting to the then part, it is successful. So we'll get some registration data back. We can just log service worker registration successful. And then pass through that registration data. And we'll catch any errors. If there's an error in registering it, and we'll add a console.warn saying service worker registration failed and pass through the error message. So with that, let's try this out. We'll save all of our files and we'll run our dev script. And once that's done compiling, we head back to our app and look in the console. We see that our registration failed. Failed to register a service worker. A bad HTTP response code was received when fetching the script. Well, this is obvious. We're not telling our next server how to handle this request. When we're registering the service worker, which we set up within our next config, which our Webpack plugin created, we're trying to register it here with this forward slash service dash worker dot JS, but we've not told next about it. So how do we handle our server, setting up our server to serve this service worker file? Well, we're going to create our own custom server or at least combine our server with next. So we'll create this server in a server.js file. And this process will consist of bringing in next and telling it about the environment it's executing in, running it, and then giving the server that we'll create a context to operate in. So I know that sounds confusing, but it'll be rather straightforward. We'll start with bringing in next. Once again, we'll use CommonJS, so we'll require next. We need to first tell next what environment we're working in. So we'll create this variable called dev, and we will be in the dev environment, the development environment, if process.env.node.env is not equal to production. 
So this value and this process.env usually refers to a value that's set within a .env file, a environment variables file. Node env tells node the environment that we're operating in. We'll be setting this node env value to production when we deploy our application, but for now it's going to be development. So we need to tell next about that. We'll create our app with this app variable and pass next, which we required, the dev value. So next knows we're in development. Now we have our created app. So we can run our next app, at least with a custom server configuration, by saying app.prepare. We have this prepare method. And we can run then. We can add a then statement in order to combine next with our own custom server setup. We're going to use a built-in node module for this called HTTP to create our server. So we'll require HTTP. HTTP exposes a method called create server. And for virtually every server, we have a request and response. So we have these two parameters. And remember that in our index page, we're making a request to serviceworker.js. And so on our server, we need to take a look at the request URL, the request path name, in order to figure out which one is wanting the service worker. And we're going to send it back down to the client in a certain way. So the first step will be to, I'll just write a comment here, I want to parse the request URL to get its path name. So we'll use a, another built-in module called URL. So we'll require URL to create our parsed URL. We'll execute URL.parse pass in request.url and get the URL that's being requested as a property on the request object that comes in. And we'll set the second parameter to true. And then we'll be able to get the path name as a property on parseURL. ParseURL will include a lot of data about the URL that's being requested, but we just want the path name. So we'll destructure that from the parseURL object. So I'll add another comment here. If a service worker is requested. We want to serve it as a static file. We want to serve this service worker a little bit differently than Next normally handles its get requests. So we'll say if the path name, the requested path name, has service dash worker.js in it. We're going to create a file path. And again, using built-in module called path. We'll bring in path to create our own custom file path for the response that is going to be sent from the server. We'll take path.join. We'll join the current directory name with the dot next folder and we'll combine it with the service worker path name. Then with app, we have access to a special method called serve static. We want to serve the service worker as a static file. And to this, we need to pass the request that's coming in, response, and then our file path for the service worker. Basically, in general, what we're doing is that the server needs more information on how to serve this service worker. So that's all we're doing here. We're giving it in additional information so that we're not getting a 404 error. Otherwise, we're just going to handle it the way we've always been handling it. We let next deal with it. So next has a request handler. So we'll create a variable called handle. And there's a method off of app as well called get request handler. It's normally how requests are handled with next, say any requests that are coming from our static folder, any static assets coming from dot next. So just as a comment, otherwise let next take care of it. So just say handle and then pass through the request, the response, and the parsed URL.
And finally, to run our server, we can chain with our, our create server method, the listen method. So listen needs a port. We'll create a port variable, which will be set to process.env.port. And again, we're not setting any environment variables. So this port entry, this port value will have a fallback value of 3000. So our port will be 3000 in a development setting. And in this callback function, we're just going to console log listening on port and then interpolate the port variable. Okay. So now to run this, we can't just use a normal our normal dev script. We have to change our dev script to node. We have to run it with node and specify a file which is server.js. Now if in our terminal we end our script and try running this again, we should first make sure that we get a successful compilation and that somewhere we get a log saying listening on port 3000. And if we head back to our browser and we refresh, we'll still likely get this 404 error. Now why is that? Well, it may work sometimes in development that our service worker may be registered. However, it seems to only work or work best in a production environment. So since we're going to be moving on to production anyway, we're going to add a couple more scripts. We'll add a start script where we're going to set the node env value to production. And then again, run our server with node server js and our build script, which will just be next build. So to get this working correctly, to have our service worker proper, working properly, we'll first run npm run build, and then run npm start. So this is a way of, without deploying, seeing how your application will work in a production environment. So if we refresh now, we should see that our service worker registration is successful. We see a bunch of information coming back about the registration. And then if we go to application and then service workers, we should see that a service worker is activated and up and running. Now there might be old redundant service workers. All you need to do is just click unregister to remove those. And then in our cache storage, we should see a couple of entries. And, in, and if we switch to this toolbox cache, we can see we've saved our index page here. We've got our index page saved here, as well as some other files from Next. So to test this out and see that it works offline, we can go to either service workers or network and just hit the offline checkbox, hit refresh, and we should still get our index page served to us in an offline setting.